Yes, a little over a week now to the big show, the Cheltenham Festival. You'll see every race live here, of course, on Racing TV. And a chance now for Lisa O'Neill and myself to cast an eye forward eight days or so to the greatest show on turf and have a look at a few horses that we're hoping to see in action excel themselves over the few days. And Lisa, we've come up with four each and we've, I suppose, tried to stay away from the red hot favourites, haven't we? We're going to have a look at your four on the graphic here, first of all, and hopefully there might be a little bit of value in terms of the prices of some of these for punters. Lisa, as you can see, has come up with Cargazi for the Triumph Hurdle, taking on the hot pot Sergino. First into bat for you, Lisa, will be found a 50 in the Arkle Novice Chase. We've got Corbett's Cross in the National Hunt Chase, fascinating contender there, and King of Kingsfield in the County Hurdle. So an interesting list, and as I say, no real shorties in there. Was it hard to settle on those four in the end? Um, it, it was and it wasn't, Gary. Some of them obviously are, are a little bit more obvious than others, but um, look, they're horses I like, um, and I've obviously watched throughout the whole season, and um, I'd be, I'm very interested to see what they can do next week, but I really think that they can put up a bold show, um, all four of them. So look, they're up against strong competition, and... Um, yeah, look, they're horses that I, I really think can put up in a good display next week. So, mm. I'm not sure which one we're going to have a look at first here, but we're going to show you some visual clues of each one, and it is indeed going to be Cargazi, the triumph hurdle hopeful for Willie Mullins. Who do you think will ride Cargazi? That's an interesting question, I think, Lisa, at the Cheltenham Festival, because Danny Mullins obviously won on her here. This is the race we're going to have a look at at the Dublin Racing Festival, where she beats Storm Hart. Paul Tenham was on that one. And Madgeborough, obviously, for the Mullins stable, has run really well to finish third here as well. Do you think Danny might keep the ride? There is potential that Danny could keep the ride. Um yeah, I suppose, look, in behind, you're probably looking at particular improvers. That's what Paul Townend will be looking at as well. But for me, I think all the evidence um, is with Cargizzi. I, I really like what she's done. Obviously, she stepped up from Christmas to the Dublin Racing Festival. She was far too keen at the, the Christmas Festival. And I think she settled a lot better at the Dublin Racing Festival. And look, she's getting seven pounds off the geldings in the race as well. And I know we probably don't have the calibre of what we did have last uh, couple of seasons in the Triumph, but I think she's a standout horse and um, I'm interested to see what she can do. I, it'll be interesting to see if Danny does keep the ride, maybe Paul Townend will decide to go with her, um, but I think she's a solid horse to go with. At the, when I looked, she was about 8-1 to one in the betting um, and look, I know, I think she's, she's got the best of the Irish form coming into this. So Gina, as I say, is a red-hot favourite, Lisa. I'm not sure whether you've necessarily got anything against him. Is it more a case you're just looking for that each-way angle? Do you think he will be very hard to beat? I think he could be hard to beat. I'm more just looking outside the favourite, obviously. Um, look, we've seen what he'd done to Burnt, Burnt Out Road in the last time we seen him beating him by 10 or 11 lengths, and he'd done that very, very easily. He potentially will be very hard to beat. I just think Kargizi, at the price that she is, getting £7 off his back is worth, worth a go. Lovely. OK, good shout for Cargazi then for Lisa in the Triumph Hurdle. We're going to have a look now at Founder 50, who's Lisa's pick for the Arkle Trophy, the second race on the opening day. And we're going to go back to his excellent run here. He's run well on his last couple of starts, I think you'd have to say. But the run against the Alete Tomp, Lisa, at the Dublin Racing Festival, where he just gets collared close home, presumably was the final piece of the jigsaw for you with this guy, was it? Yeah, it definitely was, Gary. I think he's going into the arc a little bit underrated. Um, I think everyone's talking about, obviously, Marine National and coming back from this run. And look, I think Founder 50 has done very little wrong in defeat. He obviously came up against uh, I am Maximus in the Drinmore and um, he obviously showed himself to really good effect at Leopardstown over the Christmas and and at the Dublin Racing Festival as well. I thought it was a really good run, and I think the fact that um, he'll be coming up the hill, he's got that proven stamina as well, I think that will really play to his advantage. I think there's loads of positives to take from him. Um, look, this this was him, obviously, at the uh, Christmas Festival, and albeit he's a quirky kind of character, I think he's matured an awful lot this year, and um, Jack Kennedy on board as well. I know he holds him in really high regard, and I just think everyone's talking about the other horses. I think he's going into the this is pretty underrated, and I think he can he can throw down throw down a big challenge. 
He's a talented horse, there's no question about that. That was his grade one win here at the Leopard Sand Christmas meeting. Both of those races, he's had the likes of Fasal Vega behind him. Of course, he beat Marine Nationale last time out as well, Lisa. So he's beaten a lot of the horses who are going to be well fancied to win the Arkle. Is that kind of persuading you there's value in the price as well? Yeah, I think I definitely think there's value in the price. Um, obviously, the fact, as I said, all the, the other horses, everyone seems to be talking about them. Nobody really seems to be talking about him too much. And um, I'd expect him to run a really big race. Um, you know, he's he's a horse, as I said, I think he's really progressed. He's an improved, stronger performer this year. And he's really come into his own over fences. So I'd be expecting a bold show from him. Have you had a chance to ride him at all lately? No, I haven't no. actually. Um, but the vibes are good. The vibes are good. Yeah, Mark Foley actually rides him an awful lot at home and Jack Kennedy as well. And um, you look, he's a really likeable type and he's done very little wrong. And um, for the Bechtive stud team, Noel and Valerie Moore, and I think they'll be going to Cheltenham with a massive chance. Great stuff. We're going to stay with the novice chases for Lisa's third pick. And this is Corbett's Cross, who's going to line up all being well in the National Hunt chase towards the end of the opening day's proceedings. And... Here's his run at the Christmas meeting here, Lisa, where he finishes second to Grange Clare West. Pretty good run as well. He was given a very patient ride this day, dropped out at the back of the field. Couldn't get to grips with the winner, who's a smart horse. But again, he had some good ones behind him, like Sir Flooring Porter. Uh, Fabri de Chomte, I think, was behind as well. Sadly, Grange Clare West ruled out for the remainder of the season, but... Tell us what in particular you like about Corbett's Cross for the National Hunt Chase. I just think he's made for it, to be honest, Gary. Um, look, it was obviously, he was a little bit disappointed that he couldn't maybe get closer. I thought he was going to be the winner of this race on the day, but look, things didn't work out for him. But I think, obviously, uh, going to the Cheltenham Festival, stepping up in trip as well. He's obviously a horse that we've seen him at the Cheltenham Festival last year. We'll get a look at that VT now in a second in the Albert Bartlett when, when he did come out... Um, he ran out through the wing at the last, but who's who's to know what would have happened, Gary? But he's so versatile. He's won one over two mile. He's obviously won one over two and a half. And this was going to be um, a really big run from him in the Albert Bartlett last year, as I mentioned. And look, stay away, Faye was poised there in the middle in the pink colours, but uh, Corbett's cross coming on the outside. Mark Walsh gives him a flick behind the saddle, Gary, but this is where he, we lose him. Yeah, and just dropping out of the shot there, you might see the red cap. That's Embassy Gardens, who, of course, is his main rival for the National Hunt Chase, according to the market. We'll speak more about him in just a second. But what do you think actually happened here, Lisa? I don't think there's any question about this horse's temperament or anything like that. I think he was just maybe a little bit too tight there, wasn't he? Yeah, potentially, Gary. Look, maybe he... He just copped the gap, took his eye off the hurl a little bit. And obviously it was very unexpected from Mark Walsh as well. We'll get a look at the head on here. He's pretty close to the rail and you can see the little gap that there is between the wing mm. and the rail as well. Um, and he obviously cops that and, and just jinxed to his, to his right as he approaches it. But look, who's to say what would have happened, Gary, if he did stay in and jump the last? Uh, he was obviously going to lay down a big challenge to stay away Faye, but I think he's a horse with an abundance of ability loads of talent as well and I'm excited to see what he can do but uh, you know look I followed him for a long time even since he was with Eugene O'Sullivan when we seen him win a handicap with Maxine on board in Fairy House and um, I'd be expecting him to run a massive race. And what do you think about Embassy Gardens who's looked the part admittedly over fences so far do you think it's going to be a good dust up? Yeah, look, it, I'm sure it will be. Um, I just think that Corbett's cross maybe just has a little bit more up his sleeve. Embassy Garden, look, I, he's done very little wrong um, and he looks like he's a horse that's really come into his own over fences. But for me, Corbett's cross maybe just has a little bit more class. Lovely. OK, and the final one of Lisa's quartet, as we saw earlier on, is King of Kingsfield, who has been well talked up as a big chance for the county hurdle. I think Ruby is actually quite sweet on his prospects in this race as well. Novice going into handicap company. Mark of 140, Lee said. Did you think that was fair enough based on what you've seen of him so far and maybe gives him a bit of wriggle room? Yeah, I think it does, Gary. 10-12 um, on his back. I'm sure he'll be the pick of potentially Jack Kennedy as well. Look, from what we've seen of him so far, um, this is obviously up against Ballyburn. Slade Steel on front of him as well. Absurd in behind him um, in the grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival. This was a pretty good show from him too, Gary. Look, I've probably questioned his resolution in the past, um, but I think... 
as the season has progressed, I think obviously he's been ridden differently. He's been dropped in and coming home seems to suit him better than being ridden positively. Um, and I was actually impressed, even though he seemed to, he seemed to maybe, his run seemed to peter out a little bit. I actually was impressed with the way he stayed on and hit the line in the end, Gary, at the Dublin Racing Festival. But look, he was second in the Royal Bond behind Farron Glory. He's stepping into handicap company off a mark of 140. Um, I, I, I think that's a good mark to have for him and look to be honest I was actually siding with Pied Piper for, for a while before the weights came out he's gone up a couple of pounds I think he's another that could run really well too but um, I wouldn't be surprised maybe if Gordon decides to claim off him um, he ran really well off 154 last year but King of Kingsfield I think just has that 10-12 on his back She's got a bit of a glint in her eye, hasn't she, about King of Kingsfield there. Vote of confidence from Lisa for the county hurdle candidate, who's most likely, you'd imagine, to be the mount of Jack Kennedy. Let's just recap Lisa's four to follow for the Cheltenham Festival then. Cargazy in the Triumph hurdle. We shall see who ends up in the saddle there. Danny Mullins, I'm sure, will be hoping against hope that he is left on board, but Paul Tennant might have something to say about that. Found a 50 in the Arkell Novice Chase. Corbett's cross in the National Hunt Chase, expecting Derek O'Connor to ride him. And King of Kingsfield in the County Hurl. Would he be the strongest of the four? Yeah, I think so. I mm. think so. Look, Gary, some of them some of them are shorter prices than others, but there's there's no point looking at the favourites all the time. So we look for a bit of value.